name is Carolina Hernandez and today I'm going to be talking to you about the hygiene hypothesis. Can we be too clean? Uh, many people think that our obsession with cleanliness is to blame for the fact that there is an increase in allergies in developing countries. So the hygiene hypothesis was first proposed by Dr. David Strachan who observed an inverse correlation of hay fever and uh, birth order. This is indicated by this figure right here. As you can see, on the x-axis, we have birth order and father's social class. On the y-axis, we have prevalence of hay fever at the age of 16. He followed over, seven, over 17,000 British children born in 1958. This is illustrated by the black bars. As you can see, the inverse correlation between hay fever and birth order. Thanks to this findings, he postulated that in that infection protect, protects against atopy. He also postulates that early childhood edge infections inhibit the tendency to develop allergic diseases later on in life. Some factors that contribute to the hygiene hypothesis include better sanitation of food, better water supplies, increase in personal hygiene, increase in medical advances, and elimination of habitats and creatures that generate parasitic disease. This figure helps us better understand the hygiene hypothesis. On this side, we have developing countries, which are large family in size, rural homes, livestock, intestinal microflora is variable, transient, low antibiotic use, high hemolymph burden, poor sanitation, and high oral fecal burden. On this side, we have the westernized countries, which are small family size, affluent, urban homes, stable intestinal microflora, low or absent hamlet burden, good sanitation, and low oral fecal burden. As you can see on the westernized countries, there's an increase in allergic disorders such as asthma, eczema, and rhinitis, compared to those in developing countries with non-allergic responses. Because developed countries like the presence of hemolymph worms and other parasites in the human body, IgE loses its natural substance and focuses its attention. Because of this disruption, the T helper 2 immunity arm is more prone to develop in an unguided fashion. The powerful forces are no longer fluctuated against parasitic infections, but targeted to harmless environmental antigens. Mechanisms. When considering the multiple of infections agents that can bring protection from variable immunological disorders, is, um, it is not surprising that there are several mechanisms that one um, can single. Um, such mechanisms include um, T helper type 1 and T helper type 2 deviation. Some authors suggest that initially that in developed countries, um, the lack of microbial burden in early childhood, which normally favors strong Th1 biased immunity, redirects the immune response towards T helper 2 phenotype and therefore predisposes the host to allergic disorders. The second mechanism is um, antigenic competition slash homeostasis. Attention has been drawn to lymphocyte competition for cytokines recogni recognition for major histo histocompatibility complexes and cell peptide complexes and growth factors necessary to differentiation and proliferation of B and T cells. This is all during immune response within the frame of uh, lymph lymphocyte homeostasis. The third mechanism is immunoregulation. Another mechanism involves T cells, which can suppress immune response distinct from responses against the antigen in question. Then we have the non-antigenic ligands. A number of experiments indicate that infectious agents can promote protection from allergic diseases through mechanisms independent of their constitutive agents leading to stimulation of uh, non-antigen specific receptors. Then we have non um, gene environment interactions. 
So uh, mouse studies have shown that these gene environment interactions explain a proportion of the phenotypic variants we see. So the objective of this presentation is to see if vaccinations, antibiotics, personal hygiene, and cleanliness cause an increase of allergic disease in developed countries. So our first study was a skin prick test on children. Um, industrialized countries had low pathogenic exposure and developing countries had high pathogenic exposure. So um, on the low pathogenic exposure side, we have weak regulatory network. On the high pathogenic exposure side, we have strong regulatory network. Um, on this side, we see that there is an increase of allergic responses such as, as, as asthma and rhinochondritis. On the high pathogenic exposure, we have zero positive allergies and very little allergic disease. Another study um, reviewed how childbirth order affects the hygiene hypothesis. So as you can see, this figure indicates that um, only children have few infections um, and live in a more sterile environment. So um, this causes an increase in allergies and asthma compared to daycare children or children who have older siblings have more infections, more T helper um, one responses um, are exposed to more microbes and animals. Um, there has been, been some evidence that children who grow up on farms um, develop fewer allergies. Um, this theory is that farms increase exposure to different types of good and bad germs, which stimulate the immune system and reduce the risk that the children will develop allergies. Another study measured um, the relate. They measured the relatedness of personal and home cleanliness to the risk of asthma and allergies um, with comprehensive questionnaires, information of home and personal cleanliness, and allergic health conditions at school age, which was collected uh, from 399 participants. Um, but bacterial markers were then assessed in floor and mattress dust and were related to cleanliness and allergic diseases. The results of this study indicated that um, development of allergies was not related to home and personal cleanliness. As you can see um, from 0 0.5 to 2 in asthma, atopy, eczema, and hay fever, they measured the floor and mattress and they measured endotoxin load, dust weight of all of them, and there was an inverse correlation as well. So. Cleanliness does not matter. Okay, so um, from the data gathered, we can answer the following questions. Is personal hygiene a likely factor in the rise of allergies? So bathing and showering does remove germs from our skin, but there is no evidence linking frequency of washing, showering, or bathing um, to increase risk of allergies. Are antibiotics to blame for the rise in allergies? There is some evidence linking the use of antibiotics with the rise in allergies. It is thought that antibiotics may reduce the amount of germs on our skin and in our gut. This upsets the body's normal balance and the immune system finds it difficult to tell the difference between harmless and good germs. Are vaccines to blame for allergies? Um, there has been no evidence to prove that vaccines are associated with rise in allergy level. Uh, vaccination has saved more lives and prevented more serious diseases than any advance in recent medical history. So what else could explain these, the rise in allergies? Um, well, allergies have risen sharply over the past two decades and we're not entirely sure why. Changes to the type of germs we come into contact with is the only factor among many that may explain this rise. Um, other factors include um, changes in diet and um, eating allergy-causing foods, um, our environment, where we live, family history of allergy, and how physically active we are. Lastly, can we be too clean? No. 
Um, good hygiene is about avoiding infection and preventing the spread of infection to others. Good hygiene isn't about being dirty um, or dirt free and it doesn't require being obsessively clean. Good hygiene is about preventing the spread of germs um, at times and, and in places and situations where um, this really matters. Um, such as when you prepare food, when you go to the restroom, when you sneeze, um, and when someone's ill with an infection. So some implications and therapeutics for the future for research um, for the hygiene hypothesis include efforts should focus more on efficient manipulation of regulatory T cells to imprint allergen specific specificity uh, for therapeutic purposes without hampering the efficacy of their routine childhood vaccination. And also genetic studies concentrated on genes involved in the control of inflammation in our body. Thank you.